Kesiwe, come experience the Fago Kesi Festival with me. What is the Fago Kesi Festival? This is an African digital innovation festival held at the Witts University's Simolochong Digital Innovation Precinct in Bramfontein, Johannesburg. The festival is rooted in showcasing and developing skills in technology, art and culture in Africa. It includes media such as digital art, animation, gaming, XR, which includes VR and AR, and music. It was founded in 2014 and I last attended a Women in Tech ZA event at the festival in 2016 when the precinct opened. Seven years later, I was excited to finally attend again given the growth of the festival and my own personal growth, not just as a visual artist, but as an instructional or learning designer and having a master's degree in visual and digital media. Moreover, this year was the momentous 10-year anniversary. The theme was hashtag more flow, which questions how we use digital innovation and creativity to build new worlds. As stated, in a reality asking for more data, more information, more work, and more pressure, we search for hashtag more flow, paths of least resistance with the most benefit. Let's get back to the opening evening of the festival. The New Moon Dance Troupe from Botswana, brought by XR exhibitor Moraki Molema, opened the former part of the evening. They gave a mesmerizing multimedia sensory cultural Botswana dance performance. That painted white bodies became the canvases for the digital visual projections. It was a little taste of Moratiwa's VR 360 film, The Cosmic Egg, which was exhibited for the duration of the festival. Muratiwa gave a victory dance at the end of that performance. The animated trailer of the festival then continued the rest of the former opening, which captured the spirit of the festival and brought it to life. Great work by the Molo animation team. Join us from 26 September for Fago Casey's 10 year anniversary. Do Me With A Why was our MC. Then it was time for the important speeches that highlighted the origins of Fagu Gesi, where it currently is and its hope for the future, and also appreciating those who have been instrumental to its development and success. Wow, well, I, I abandoned my speech a few times, but um, when I look around the room, I, my instinct is to speak from the heart. Digital creatives were saying what they, what they want. And um, around 2018, we then partnered with, with AFD that gave us a substantial grant to then form digital, the Digital Content Hub. And we've since launched multiple programs from there. And this is why all of you are gathering here today, because it's your voice that breathes our work. Your voice breathes our DNA and why we get up, get up in the morning. We've since gone through a crazy pandemic so many co-productions happened um, between entrepreneurs and digital creatives within Fakigezi, within Simolokong, and some of our, our international partners. So for those who have doubt, the sector proved that you can be sustainable, that you can be high growth. And what is fantastic, our, our talent stopped or at least slowed down in leaving our shores. They realized that you can be based in Johannesburg or Nairobi or Lagos and continue international uh, uh, partnerships working and earning in multiple uh, currencies. It's needed and it's inspiring and it's exciting. Um, but the corporate world and, and government needs you to contribute in terms of where and how we evolve smart cities. So where and how can we start using this work to educate others, to make create awareness? There was also an unveiling in between to rename Founder Square, 
to the Professor Barry Dolaski Square to honor the late founder of the Tsimalafong precinct to be passed on earlier this year. We felt that as a community we wanted to honor our founder. started and how rudimentary and how punk it was in, in the first years. Create a spark, or as we always spoke about it together, to activate the space. And the second person who I'm really happy to recognize, and he's still with us, unlike Barry, long may you stay with us, is the extraordinary digital media producer, Glenn von Lochenberg, who's right. here. <laughs> my German colleague, <laughs> myself. I don't think you will find any other tie around any other neck tonight. Mm -hmm. Skills using, again, animation, video games, everything you learn here. But I saw people who were able to tell African stories, great African stories, and great South African stories. And I sense that these stories can have sort of a Pan-African success. And, and again, I'm, I'm very enthusiastic, I'm very optimistic. This occasion for a, a digital innovation festival held in Africa, proudly held in Africa. So here I'll start with my written part. Welcome to a decade of Fakugesi, Africa's largest digital creative innovation festival. At the forefront of digital innovation and to put that in the world spotlight. And I think we truly are doing that now. This 10 year mark, we shift gears to create more flow. In this world wracked with climate crisis, social problems and the onset of huge changes brought on by AI, we believe that African culture and creativity will help find solutions to these challenges. Not more CO2, coal, corruption, joblessness, inequality, injustice, but more flow. Yes, more queerness, creativity, community, mindfulness, kindness, less pressure, more flow. Eduardo then highlighted the activities that would take place in the week at the festival in numbers. Don Williams, the head of the Digital Content Hub, Joy Moela, Eric Dennis, and all of our incredible partners. And I'd really like to thank our team. We have a very special team of very different, interesting individuals who, who contribute to this. quickly to new situations. And you can absorb new ideas quicker than other factors. And that's very impressive to see here. At the same time, I believe that um, physical spaces for collaboration, network, networking and learning, such as here at Fakugesi, remain important. The director of the South African Cultural Observatory, and she says, Ultimately, we all need to play a role in rebuilding and reshaping the cultural and creative industry so we can all continue to benefit from the richness it has to offer. There's simply too much to lose if we don't. Thank you, Aninka. Thank you for attending this evening, and I will not keep you away from a dream prison. So make sure that, you know, you listen. Maria McCloy detailed while we mixed and mingled. And that was the end of the opening ceremony. I also attended the Fago Gesi Conference Day, which was one of the biggest days of the festival. It was mainly held in the iClub. <laughs> Nondo Goza, a.k.a. Maya, was our host. First up was a panel moderated by Tisa Zolzaza called Flow 360. This was on XR, or Extended Reality, which includes VR and AR. To give you guys context of what that includes, it includes virtual reality, which is when you put on the goggles and you're inside the movie. Um, it includes augmented reality, which is if you use the Snapchat filter, you use augmented reality. <laughs> Morati Amolema explained her VR 360 movie creation process for the Cosmic Egg in relation to her background in theater production, dance, culture, and using the VR media. I think before I go into how the medium influenced my craft, I have to explain a little bit my background. 
So my background is in stage, uh, particular dance theatre, and um, in my style of dance theatre, I already love to use uh, technology. Um, when I was studying in the US uh, to do my undergrad in media art, um, I, I started becoming very defensive about uh, how Africa is represented by the uh, quote-unquote West. And uh, it became very apparent and important to me that I represent the intelligence of our cultures, especially indigenous culture, and in particular because I love so much um, nature and conservation, um, it was important for me also to, to represent um, um, you know, the, the ecological living of indigenous people. So for me, um, even though I, I have a background in gymnastics and in contemporary dance, um, I always make sure that I represent traditional dance. Um, that is my mission. So um, The Cosmic Egg was actually a stage production. Um, it was called Roots, and it was a 45-minute stage production. And um, what happened is, I had a show called um, For the Love of Figure, an anthology of movement. I had different, kind of like a variety show, I had different shows um, that had different types of dances and I mean we rehearsed and rehearsed and I said, you know what, why don't I pick here, pick here, I have already a palette, then let me just put it together and come up with a story and Moradua fired. So, um, the first thing that happened, how the media influenced um, the Cosmic Egg, is that my production was 45 minutes, but because VR, you have a limited time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes, before you start feeling nauseous, um, I had to summarize the storyline into 10 minutes, so basically take the most important points and then the essence of the story and then simplify it, really simplify it, and then I had 10 minutes of choreography. Um, so that was the first thing. The second thing was, as stage is a 180 situation, um, I now had to think 360. And um, so how I approached it is that in rehearsals, I would just put a tennis ball in the middle and then did the blocking and the choreography already in a circle. So I prepared the dance theater basically as one take. So already when we were then on set, everything was rehearsed, everything was ready to go. There was no stopping in between. It was just one take, like a theater show. Um, what was a challenge with the 360 is that we don't have a backstage. So, the characters had to hide behind the bushes <laughs> and then appear from there. So, those were little con uh, considerations I had to put in uh, um, as, as the whole performance. Another thing that, that was, I don't know if it was deliberate, but it was more like a synergy, is that already uh, the traditional dances, many of them, occur in a half circle or in a circle because the sand dances, they dance around the fire in a circle. So some of the shots and uh, where it was, it was quite natural in a circle. Um, Other panelists who spoke included Chirele Tsotwenyane, an XR producer who's currently with Electric South, and some VIT School of Digital Art students with VR projects being exhibited at the festival. I then went to check out the VR 360 films, including The Cosmic Egg, to finally experience what the panelists were talking about. With my VR goggles and headphones on, I was in an immersive experience. Those 10 minutes or so included a lot of spinning because I wanted to take everything in. There was something happening in the whole 360 space. Muratiwa got to troll me while I was immersed in the Cosmic Egg movie. 
I was so proud of her and impressed with her creation at the end. Storytelling was at the heart, even though it used new media. It made me imagine the possibilities of stories we can tell. I watched more VR productions in the form of student-created music videos. It was quite interesting. The one thing, though, about prolonged immersion in this media is nausea and sensory overwhelm, which threatened me, but I pushed through. I also got to see some of the queer catalyst animation work during the festival. There was also a panel discussion on animation moderated by Joy Mawela, head of the digital content hub at the Included on the panel were African animation specialists such as Jose Dono, Desejo Foster, and Jogo Macharia. Decided, let me start becoming a writer for animation, and then actually I decided, well, I like what I write, I kind of like, um, I, want, I want to have the power, so I want to be a director, and I discovered, well, that's where the power is, so then be a producer. Yeah. <laughs> Magdalene Reddy represented the non technical uh, sphere of animation and film at large through Durban Film Art. For them to get visibility and get investments in the work that they do it. Great. I was excited yeah, to see a successful you. woman uh, so in animation. I'll skip the tragedy of my teen right years and my 20s, plus, but um, I studied Kia writing. And um, I have a background in she live action, some of her so I worked as a writer um, with a lot of animation. local stations for quite a few years, um, and then I shifted into commercials um, in Cape Town to kind of grow my chops in that space, grew some heavy chops. Um, and then I moved over to documentary film for a bit, which is a deep love of mine in the backdrops. For writers, black female writers, on a Netflix series, and I just applied in June. I've never had engaged in animation before. I think a lot of people speak about that backdrop of it's not really something that you engage in your studies. Just doing film alone is something. So when you say animation, your parents are like, deep by and like, I don't understand. So. It wasn't a thing for me, but again, the idea of they were looking for black female African writers, that's my bite. I applied, I got the job, I met the amazing creator Malenda from Zambia, who's in the audience, special shout out. Um, yeah, and worked on that project, really amazing, really impactful, um, yeah, really powerful experience. Again, never been in a room with all black female African writers, so you can only imagine. The show is now out on Netflix, it is amazing, please go watch. Um, during that time, I started working with Triggerfish a little bit more, and then I got on Key and the Kamoja Heroes as a co-executive creative consultant for Trigger. I know, it's a mouthful here. Yeah. Every time. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mouthful. But I'm um, co-executive creative consultant on the Kia and the Kamoja Heroes show, and during that time also, I joined Play Nice Pictures with Rafaela and Mark. Mark is one of the creators of Kia. There was then a panel discussion on gaming. Discussion for gaming is gamifying our lives. Most of the panel joined virtually from all over Africa. Um, we maybe have to start looking at um, culturally relevant games as the source of those systems that we implement into these gamification processes. Um, I then also got to experience Dr. Sachava Mape's incredible multifaceted exhibition, which was shown at the Venice Biennale earlier in 2023. His work imagines Afrofuturistic architecture informed by past cultural practices through AI. His practice envisions decolonizing architectural theory and practice by garnering wisdom from indigenous knowledge systems. The installation included massive floor-to-ceiling digital art prints while the concept video played in the center to depict the vision. One of the most important panels that I enjoyed and that was very informative for me was AI to Amplify. 
AI has been one of the most key things permeating everything this past year. It involved the Goethe Institute AI project winners from all over the world, such as Beatrice Garcia Santa Cruz, Marianne Emma Mary, and Susan Otieno. Their solutions covered inclusivity, context, and accessibility in various fields. We see representation from Asia, Europe, and, and Africa today. We need all in some groups, but I realize that many of this research is done by people in the global north, not really with people in the global south. So I think for me it was this, this connection, this gap, but it's really something that I learned. And I think in our solution we are understanding that the only possible and stable way we can build something is building a community together and really collaborating with the experts from the Global South and the Global North to help us. But we see AI as a tool that will shape the assistive technology industry and even though there are groups that are often left behind and most affected like people with psychosocial disabilities, involving such groups at the developmental stages and constant re-evaluation will be the step in the right direction and leaving no one out. Conversation on digital ID, digital identity, and uh, in Kenya, we had the human number uh, that they wanted to launch, but then there was a, a, a community, the Nubian community, who went to court uh, and kind of just said that they were actually being excluded. So they went to court to contest the launch of that program, and that ended up being a catalyst for the Data Protection Act 2019 in Kenya. And so the government has come again with a Maisha number that they're looking to launch on the 29th of September. And this is kind of the unique personal identifier that they're going to use to you know, roll out e-government services. However, there's still an aspect of exclusionary practices. And so the Nubian community again has gone to court to fight this launch because they are being excluded from the continental trade agreement. And there's a conversation about competition. So in America, it's fairness and contestability. You want to have equity in the market for small businesses and large businesses to be able to um, kind of realize um, you know, some of the products. But in Africa, it's very different. Big companies, when they come into the market, they will literally dominate. Conference day was a success, and I made some new connections. Come along with me to the second Fago Casey Awards. Awards were well attended this year. It was a full house. Opening the show was a performance by Mubilo who had elements of digital art in the background. We then went into a few speeches before kicking off the actual award. One, and then the excitement, and then back to the awards. Well, after 10 years of Happy Gazing Festival, can you believe? Um, yeah, we're very excited, as Leslie was saying. The number of applicants really increased this year, but I think more importantly, also the quality was incredible. Yeah, I, Part of this was also that we could making a community of practice. So last year, our jury was an incredible who's who of every different category of digital creative practice. I'm going to feel all emotional a little bit because it's been 10 years of Fakugezi and I have been involved in so many iterations of Fakugezi. 15 years ago when people were saying that there's no electricity in Africa and obviously there's no digital anything. And here we are as a testament in our second awards. Last year was absolutely amazing to see. Finally, people receiving the appreciation. These are some of the jury that worked with Jeb Chumba to select the awards winners. The first category was animation. In the suspense. There's no way. So. <laughs> Lola Eikens from South Africa won for my lady. Then I'm still here as a supervisor 
art director, mentor. Thank you so much for support and to everyone that's in hand. Other winners for animation were the song Maiden from Kenya and the present from South Africa. There were also awards for animation jams, which are animations created in 48 hours. It's getting intense. It's getting intense. None of us! Well done, guys. Well done. When you're done there, I need a handshake. Come here when you're done there, please. No, when you're done. Then there were none the next category was music. Guessing for this recognition of our creativity, we would like to thank Mother Father God for the gift of life. Digital art was also honored. I would just like to explain a little bit about the title. It's called Nosukai and it's a wall of word for computers. And there was a lot of debate with this word when I did the exhibition in Senegal because it's actually also was a something else, a place to party. And it was put together by a group of linguists called uh, Wall of Akhamli. And they are working to uh, put together the word to teach science and technology because one of the things we can heard is that we cannot teach science and technology with the local language because it lacks the vocabulary. So that was was important for me to use this word. Thank you so much. Congratulations. The XR category was also there, which includes VR and AR. I'm seeing here somebody from Kenya, Baru Collective. <laughs> We're very grateful and excited. Thank you so much. Yeah. This award is for the entire team. Um, and Ivan, um, your experience on child mental health meant a lot to me. And getting the support. Awarded by IFA. Alusa, are you in the building this evening? Alusa, please make your way to the stand. Hey, this way, this way, this way. There we go, there we go, there we go. I'm loving Alusa's vibe, yes. Congratulations to Anuta. I am very um, grateful to Bubble Dash Club for giving me the resources and opportunity to make this. Um, the same potential in Phantom, like, you know, just a paragraph on a PDF. They really helped me bring this entire thing to life. Shout out to the homies. Itfa also Peter, presented Peter, the Rising Star. This year in Amsterdam, preparing for the next edition of our festival. We're really sorry. Yeah. The first ever Itfa Love Club Spotlight Award together with Fongesi is Natasha Kandiola. Thank you, Fongesi and the Digital Lab Africa Bootcamp for the opportunity. Uh, I'm looking forward to meeting and collaborating with other artists in IFA. Your game category. Yeah. What's the one that's close to me? And um, we've got here the Now Factor South Africa. Congratulations. Optimize one for that. There were also jams for gaming based on the upcoming series Spinners. The series that's going to be coming up, Spinners. And uh, that series will be on Showmax and Canal Plus. Yes. And the runner up is going with 30,000 rands. And that is last minute later. <laughs> Okay, the winner 
ensure that they were able to represent everything that the publishers needed, right? It was not easy, they had to also work hard and also they could show that they will be able to continue further and that's one of the reasons why they were selected and it's the winner is now you can do that. <laughs> and the winner is Fed Cook Studios. Of course. Fed Cook Studios were the big winner for the night with that game Taxi Rant. And that closed the award show and my Fabu Beauty experience. <laughs> Hopefully next year will be bigger and better and I'll get to experience it all again.